Good morning. And Milan just put in a link from the previous workshop if you if any of you uh, want to review it. We are recording this one just so um, in case any questions come back, any feedback that we get, we do want to make sure that um, that's available. Yeah, and if you have cameras on, um, please feel free to turn them on. It's great to see um, who I'm talking to. So. Um, and as I'm running through the presentation, uh, we will be monitoring, monitoring the chat. So um, feel free to put any questions in there that you have um, or any other items that you can see, any sort of features you can think of that we um, can use to implement in future ones that, that would be awesome too. Okay, so I think we're at 55, um, which is roughly the amount of folks who um, had registered for it. So I'll go ahead and get started and share my screen. Um, before we get started, can everyone hear me okay? Quick thumbs up and reactions or anything like that would be awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that live thumbs up too. That's, that's pretty good. Um, so what I want to run through today is just um, how to submit the RAFTA electronically. So some of you um, have seen this before. Some of you may be working with housing authorities that are partners with us now. Um, some may be folks who have not worked with the Housing Authority yet, but want to get started. So um, we wanted to have this eRAFTA um, presentation for you so that you can get to know our system a little bit better, get to know us a little bit better, um, and that we can answer any questions that you would have. So. All right, so our agenda today is just going to go over, um, give you an overview of what Bob.ai is, who we are. Um, and then the second item would be sign up and relationship codes. What are they? Who needs them? Um, and then also we'll look at the viewing of our rental leads. So who has a voucher that is looking for a unit right now? Um, and how do I contact them? Um, and then we'll run through how to list a unit with the eRAFTA platform and also how to create and submit the request for tenancy approval. All right. So an overview of Bob.ai, um, we are a platform for housing providers to list their units and find assisted rental leads anywhere in the US. And I just wanna emphasize that anywhere in the US, right? So all of the documents that are completed are very similar across the board um, to any housing authority, whether that's in um, you know, West Coast in California, all the way to DC, um, everything would be very standardized in terms of what HUD is looking for. Um, so once you list your unit, uh, you could be matched with voucher holders automatically. So once you list your unit, we'll automatically give you a list of all voucher holders who um, match your unit either by the bedroom size, but also that can afford your unit based on what you listed in terms of um, the rent amount and the utility allowance. Um, additionally, you can create the RAFTA for any agency in the US. So uh, regardless of whether or not they are doing eRAFTAs, you can also download that RFTA packet and um, email it, fax it, however they're doing things these days. And in terms of signing up, you can go to our website at uh, bobs.ai, sign up for your email address. Um, if you are a Facebook user, you can just sign up using your Facebook account. That way you don't have to, you know, it's, it's um, single sign-on, uh, integrates automatically. You don't have to remember another password. Uh, I know sometimes those are hard if you don't have um, a password keychain and whatnot. Um, same with Google. If you're using a, a Gmail account, you can also sign up that way as well. Uh, we get this we get this question pretty often, so I just want to make sure that that's in the slide. Is do I need a relationship code? And um, no, the answer is no. You don't need a relationship code. You can sign up without it. Um, definitely list your unit if you need to. Um, what is a relationship code? It just gives you that connection to the specific PHA. Um, that you, you want to work with. So if you are an existing landlord, um, you would have the relationship code once you create that uh, initial unit. Um, and, you know, we try to make this a mobile friendly company. Uh, we are aware that most people are on their phones way more often than they're on their computers. Um, so you can download our mobile app, Bob.ai from uh, the Google Play Store or any app store um, that supports Android or iOS. And if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat or um, interrupt me as I go. 
So rent leads. Um, you can visit bob.ai backslash leads or log into um, bob.ai and open the rental leads app. This filters all the leads, which is voucher holders, um, by city, number of bedrooms, or any agency that you're looking to work with. Um, what you can do there is message the renters directly. So you can just go to actions, message the renter, um, and let them know that your unit is available for them. Um, right now, uh, emergency housing vouchers have a, a red hot deal logo. So most of those have um, EHV incentive proposals. So part of the American Rescue Plan Act um, implemented that was implemented last year. Some of these have um, $500 incentives, $1,000 incentives, just depending on the agency. Every page that you have in bots.ai also has a support widget that's available at the bottom right of the page. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in there. In terms of listing your unit, um, you can list each of each of the units with different floor plans on bots.ai. So say you're a landlord that has, you know, five units that um, are in there. One could be your apartment, a condo, townhouse. Um, you could create different names for them depending on um, any different, like if you're a property manager that has um, different owners that you're working with, you can also create floor plans that way and just customize it. We'll give you a default name um, that kind of makes sense in terms of the zip code and the number of bedrooms, but you can also customize that and change it however you want. Um, and uh, once you create that floor plan, it'll automatically match you to the voucher holder holders that already passed the affordability test. So um, if that voucher holder's renter profile is filled out with their complete income and their voucher size, um, it'll auto automatically match that uh, unit that you have for that floor plan to that voucher holder. And with that, all the potential tenants will be notified when the, the new unit's listed. Um, and you will also be notified when there are new vouchers added that's a match for your unit as well. And um, if for any reason um, the unit is no longer available, you can also unlist it at any time on the My Floor Plans app. Okay. So for the affordability calculator, um, Bob AI will check to ensure that your unit passes the affordability test, which is that 40% rule. Um, the tenant's portion of rent plus the utility allowance um, cannot be, um, has to be below 40% of the tenant's income. So depending on whether or not you pay for the water, the sewer, those items like that, um, that could raise the cost of that utility allowance. So what we wanna do is make sure that your unit's affordable for um, all renters that are, are matched to your unit. All right, for the RFTA process. So once you've decided to rent to a specific family with a voucher, you can create and submit your electronic route on bot.ai. Um, we'll automatically fill out part of the RFTA with the information that you already provided to us once you listed your unit. Um, so a lot of the times you don't have to do that additional like running through, is it gas, is it electric, is my stove, you know, that kind of stuff. So that part will already be in there for you. Um, and then we'll also message the tenant to electronically sign the rafter once it's submitted as well. Um, just want to make sure that the email address that you have for um, the client is the same email address that they gave to their um, public housing authority. Um, and if you ever forget um, whether or not, how do you manage your rafter here? How, does, how do I list my unit? We have all these videos um, in the feed. Um, and so once you log into our website, the feeds on the bottom, um, and you could just run through all those different training videos. And I'll actually run through one with you um, right after this as well. So in terms of the RFTA process, the housing authority will review the RAFTA um, just to make sure that the unit's an eligible type of housing. Um, some housing authorities don't allow SROs and whatnot or shared housing. Um, it, the housing authority will also check whether or not the rent is reasonable. Um, and I'll also look at the security deposit, making sure that it's approvable uh, in accordance with each state law. So if your unit is only renting for $1,000, you can't charge a $4,000 security deposit, for example. Um, and it'll also, the housing authority will also check that the owner is approvable and that there are no conflicts of interest. And what we mean by that is in terms of the rent responsibility form that um, we'll actually run through later on in the workshop that you are not related by um, blood or marriage and um, there, there are no other conflicts of interest. So if you're a barred landlord, things like that, we wanna make sure that um, the housing authority wants to make sure that that uh, is not being rented to you. Um, the other things that the housing authority will review the RFTA for 
is that the family's share of rent and utilities do not exceed 40% of the family's monthly adjusted income. So we just wanna make sure that the units are affordable for each person there. Um, and at the time of the inspection, the unit also has to meet HUD's HQS, HQS standards. So that's housing quality standards. Um, some of those do change often in terms of what the standards are. Uh, most recently, there is a new addition to have carbon monoxide um, detectors in addition to smoke alarms. So that will be coming um, towards the end of 2022. So if any of your units no longer have the carbon monoxide, that is something that they're gonna be adding soon. Just to give you guys a heads up. Um, RAFTA approval. So once the RAFTA is complete, um, the PHA will schedule the unit inspection. Um, if they're using Bob.ai for the e-RAFTAs, those can be um, scheduled within as little as three days. So um, just be on the lookout for that. Once you see the RFTA is completed and approved, um, they will automatically schedule those unit inspections. Um, if the RFTA is not complete, the PHA may contact you requesting the needed documentation. So what we do is we give them um, a little box that has the notes that are on there as well. It says, um, you know, you're missing your W-9 or, you know, your uh, direct deposit form has to be added um, and it has to be a wet signature. So a lot of different PHAs have um, the ability to customize what's in Bob.ai. So if some of them require um, an actual wet signature instead of electronic signature, that may be something that you have to upload. Um, and what the good thing about Bob.ai and working with um, PHAs that do offer e rafters is once that information is in there, you only have to do it once. Um, they're not going to ask for it again. You already have that uploaded as as needed, so you can just always attach that form. Um, another thing that may happen um, for RFTAs is if the unit didn't pass the rent reasonableness analysis, the PHA will negotiate that rent down. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background about what rent reasonable reasonableness is, is um, HUD requires that any unit has to have um, a rent that's reasonable and comparable to three other units in the same vicinity. So if your unit um, is in a newer development, we've seen this is like a little bit trickier for newer developments. So say, you know, it, it doesn't register on Google Maps because it, it doesn't exist yet. So a lot of the times this happens in um, newer subdivisions, like in, in Forney, Texas, for example, is what I've seen. Um, whenever you're, you're doing that, the rent has to be comparable to one that's nearby. So if there are no other units nearby yet, it may be a little bit trickier. So they may ask you to reduce the rent by $50 or $100, but usually it's not too much. Um, and in terms of inspections, there inspections are required at your initial occupancy. So right after the RFTA is turned in, um, you do have to have that initial unit inspected um, and during the term of the lease. So some PHAs are doing this annually, some are doing it biannually. Um, every two years. So it just depends on um, which PHA that you're working with there. Um, and if the tenant requests a complaint inspection, that will be the only other time that a PHAs will kind of go in ad hoc that's separate from the time of your annual or biannual inspection. Um, and the agency inspector will use the Bob.ai mobile app to perform the inspections. So you may get requests sometimes where um, they'll be conducted virtually. And when that happens, they're gonna be using FaceTime if you have an Apple um, iPhone or Google Duo if you have an Android. Um, and that'll allow the inspector to kind of look at um, what's in the unit without having to be there. And one of the times that we've seen this to be uh, the most useful is if someone either tests positive or is experiencing COVID symptoms, we've seen that they've just used the virtual inspection and not have to reschedule, uh, which means you get um, the clients gets to move in faster and you also get that rent faster as well. Um, so landlords and tenants, um, it should also download the Bob.ai mobile app. This will allow you to, to um, message the inspectors and to chat with them a lot easier. Um, in terms of tenant move-in, uh, the move-in dates are decided between the owners and the tenants, right? So the PHA cannot dictate when um, the move-in date is going to happen, when that lease is, you know, that lease is between you and the tenant specifically. Um, the PHA will not um cannot tell you whether or not that's approvable. However, what they can dictate is um, when the tenant can move in, they definitely wanna encourage um, families to not move in prior to when the unit passes inspection. So if the HQS has not passed inspection, they will not pay on that unit. So just so you know, um, if the client moves in on the 1st of March, the unit doesn't pass until March 15th, the housing authority will not pay until March 15th. Um, 
sometimes that, that gets a little bit tricky. That percent of the rent, uh, whatever that prorated amount will have to be paid for by the tenant. HAP contracts. So right now we also offer HAP contracts to be signed um, uh, through Bob.ai as well. It's generally initiated by the case manager and then will um, be able to be signed by you afterward. Um, so the landlord is paid after the inspection passes and all the other criteria have been met. Um, the tenant has moved in and the tenant's no longer under contract with any other unit using that voucher. Um, so if the voucher, if the tenant is kind of like in between two different units, um, just make sure that you have confirmation from them that the voucher that they had, they've, they've completely moved out of the other unit and are only moving into this unit after it passes uh, the initial inspection. Um, so with landlord support, feel free to reach out with any questions that you have about your account um, to support at bod.ai. Uh, support at bod.ai. Um, you can also reach us through the chat uh, function on the app as well. So the bob.ai uh, homepage and the rental leads, leads page have that chat widget. That's the other piece that I, I um, am hinting at. So you can also reach us there. Um, and if you have any questions about the router, the PHA related questions, you can also click on chat with the case manager and that'll take you directly to uh, the case managers with that PHA. Um, generally it'll ask you to select the reason. So um, if the reason is your inspection or an RTA, um, you could check that and then the PHA will get back to you. Um, they have a case manager chat function where they could just interface with uh, you and the tenant directly through our app as well. All right. Um, so I'm gonna run through and um, show you what the app looks like. Sorry about that. Let me go into... Milan, were there any questions before I get started with um, the app piece? I see the chat, but I'm, I'm not really monitoring it right now. Bidra and I are answering in the chat. Okay, wonderful. All right. So what I want to run through is just how to create the e-rafta. Um, so from here. So these are the certain apps that we have. Um, and here is where I was seeing um, the feed that has all the previous videos that we've had. So as we were recording this one, um, videos that we had in the past will also be in here as well. So um, I'll run through the video so that you could just see how to access them for list my unit. All right. So let me just play that for you here. Let me just make sure. Okay. Can you hear that okay? I can't hear anything. Yes, I think you need to share with sound. So maybe stop sharing on Zoom and uh, start sharing again only with sound. When you click on the list my unit That's icon. Better? Yes. It takes you to this page and you can list your vacant units anywhere in the United States here. If you have listed units in the past, you can click on one of the existing floor plans and select it, or you can add a new one. You can enter the rent amount here. For example, I will enter $1,200 for the monthly rent amount. If you allow pets, select yes, and then you can add all the needed details. If not, you would select no. Next is designating who is listing the unit, either the agent or the owner. In this case, I am the owner of the unit. But agents can also list the unit and find renters for them. I'm adding a two bedroom unit in Riverside located on Cypress Boulevard. House number 8953, Dallas with a zip code 75019. Then the general information about the unit is added. I will click next and move on to this part, which is the utilities and appliances. First, select the structural type and then you can enter information about the utilities and appliances. For example, this is a single family unit. And then select the type of heating and cooking. For this unit, the heating and water heating are natural gas, but the cooking is electric. You can also select who is paying for each of the utilities, the owner or the tenant. In this case, the owner pays for water, sewer, 
and trash collection. You can also designate if the appliances are provided by the owner or the tenant. In this case, the refrigerator is not provided by the owner, but the range or microwave is provided. After you edit all the details about the unit, you can click on Submit and save your floor plan. We recommend that multifamily property managers input the same floor plan names you use internally so your colleagues can recognize it later. Now the system will look for all the vouchers that are listed with Bob AI, and it will provide the number of vouchers that are a match for this unit. Now, at the moment, there are 16 renters on Bob AI that can afford this unit. The next step is to message one of those renters, and we can also request them to disclose their phone number and email address. Just note that this still needs to pass the rent reasonableness check. All of the units that you see here are affordable for those vouchers, so you can click View All Matched Renters. Now this will open those 16 clients. You can see here what agency provides those vouchers and how long they will remain valid. You can see the number of bedrooms and the number of the renter. In this case, it's hidden unless they decide that they want to share those details with you. We can see that they have all been contacted, meaning they all received messages via email and or their mobile app from Bob AI, alerting them that there is a new unit that's affordable for them. You can contact each of these through the group chat. Note that if they have shared their contact information, you will see that here or you can use the group chat to chat with them. Their case manager is also included in the group chat, so group chat consists of a landlord, the client or tenant, and their case manager. All right. So yeah, if you have any other questions as you're um, running through this, also, please feel free to reach out to us, but um, videos here are also super helpful. Um, and these are the parts that I had in the slide in terms of a uh, create and manage voucher part one, two, and three. Um, so I'll go ahead and um, go in to create a rafter. This, so this is just to show you um, how quick and easy it could be um, as you're doing that for yourself as well. So I'm signed in here, um, and these are rafters that I've, I've tested out previously. Um, so here is one that I'll create now. Um, for here, as you're looking at the housing authority, um, keep, keep in mind that you can create this for any PHA, COC, or nonprofit in the US, whoever's taking a voucher, right? So this could be for TBRA vouchers, VASH vouchers. Um, if you're already working with um, MDHA or something for um, a continuum of care, you can also enter that here. Um, so we'll go ahead and use our Dallas Housing Authority here. Um, and then again, you want to make sure that the voucher holder that you have is the same person who is in there. So I'm going to use Linda Jordan. Um, and this may be uh, where you want to verify the email address. And as I stated before, um, this email address should be the same one that they use with uh, their PHA as well. So um, once I enter the information of the voucher holder and the PHA, um, I'll go ahead and click proceed to RAFTA. If I'm missing anything, so say this information is not there, you see how that goes gray? That just means I can't submit it yet because I'm missing something. So anything that has um, a red line or an asterisk, those are gonna be needed. So here it goes to purple. Um, we'll click to proceed to RFTA. Um, and for this one, if I'm creating an existing floor plan, you'll see I'll have uh, previous ones already created. So this time I'll create a new one and then I could just uh, choose to name it however I'd like after that. All right. So I'll say my monthly rent is $1,000. I do not allow pets. If I did allow pets, I could hey, add. When, can I ask you hey. one, one quick question? Yeah, of course. I'm so sorry. Up right. here where it says primary email for this document, yep. we're never, like we're never able to do that. Yeah, you don't have to enter it here because it's it goes through your login. It's a it's the email address that you logged in with. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, 
No, this is grayed out, so you can't you can't enter it if it's grayed out. All right, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, so here, if you do allow pets and you have uh, your you know monthly pet deposit, uh, rent deposit, and um, other restrictions, so we have seen a, a couple of these where you know Germanman shepherds, pit bulls, things like that are not um, are restricted, uh, and if not. You know, you could just hit no and um, you won't have to enter any of that information. All right. So um, as the video had kind of mentioned, you want to enter your agent or the owner here. Um, so I'll say that I'm an owner, two bedroom. Um, if you say other here, you see how that kind of grays out. So if this is other, you can still select like six if you like. But uh, most of the times uh, it's not going to be a six bedroom. That'd be a really nice house though. <laughs> um, so here, enter your property name. This will kind of um, be what's fed into your um, existing floor plan. So say I want this to be, um, Sue's apartment. And here I wanna use 2525 Elm Street. Um, and I do wanna, I wanna point this out that we, we are in the process of switching these around, but this is using the Google Maps API. So you wanna make sure that you enter your street address how you normally would enter it. Um, it'll just show you. So you see how after I click there, then the house number gets populated there. Just make sure that you're entering your full address on this side. All right, and I'll say my unit number is one. Okay, so your structure type here. So if mine is a studio apartment, you just wanna make sure that you're changing it depending on, on what it's listed. Um, and what these do, we get this question sometimes, is why do I have to make sure that this is the same? Um, this actually ties into the utility allowance that the public housing authority has. So um, they will change depending on um, the amount of this utility allowance would change and could affect your affordability. So sometimes if it's an apartment complex, some landlords will accidentally leave it at that and then the unit isn't affordable because the utility amounts a lot higher. So just make sure that that's, um, that's consistent throughout. Um, and then here, so um, say heating is electric paid for by the tenant. I prefer natural gas stove, so I will keep it at natural gas. Um, and then water heating is electric as well. Um, most apartments will have the refrigerator and range already provided. Um, so I'll keep that consistent here. Uh, same with the water and the sewer. But again, this is up to you. It's your unit, you list it however you'd like, right? Um, so here I'll click next. Um, so I'll save this as my new floor plan, all right. Oh, when? Yep. Hey, it's Deanna again. Listen. Hey, Deanna. So when um, you do that, it saves it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess in my, I thought that we had to upload some sort of floor plan, but that creates the floor plan. Yeah, it creates a floor. You don't have to upload. No, we're not looking for the actual layout. We're not looking for the actual, like, where's the bedroom versus the, no. Okay, we're just looking okay. for um, the information. And the, the so, that just create, so that just created it. So I exactly. should put save. Okay. Yep. You just click save. And what we're trying to do here is sort of save you um, a little bit of time once you actually have the RFTA. Right, um, thanks. Yep. No problem. So here you'll see uh, six forms above um, that I'll, I'll run through shortly, but I just want to read through this notice for you. Um, so you can save the incomplete forms, but the form has to be completed before you, it'll allow you to sign. Um, so once all the forms are completed, you could then submit the RFTA. That'll automatically send an email to the client to sign, and the client cannot edit the RFTA. So even if they go into the apartment and they say, this isn't a gas stove, it's electric, they actually can't go back in and sign it. All they could do is send the RFTA back to you and have you correct the information before they can move forward. Um, so once the client goes in uh, to sign the RTA, that'll be submitted to the landlord services team. Um, and then the landlord services team will then approve the RAFTA and get the initial inspection scheduled. Um, and you can always check the status of this RAFTA at any time at the on the Manage RAFTA app. So if you have like six to 20 units, you just wanna see what the status of each one is. It'll say inspection scheduled, um, sent to client, those kinds of statuses, all right? Um, so here is sort of like your timeline. 
Uh, we start with the voucher information. So um, once a, the client has their voucher information listed, it'll be in there. Your unit is what we just completed in terms of the floor plan. So that, that has all the same unit information that will then be added to the RAFTA here. Um, so I'll run through this piece. And as you as I go to each screen, you'll see that the ones that are not done yet are going to be grayed out and the ones that are completed will be blue. All right. Um, so here's my uh, acknowledgement of rent responsibility. And as I stated before, um, this is usually necessary for um, PHAs to verify that you're not related by blood or marriage to the actual tenant um, and that you understand that the housing authority won't, won't pay any portion for any of the rent at the time that um, the client and tenant or tenant lives in a unit prior to the effective date of the actual HAB contract. So that's just to cover themselves. Um, you wanna make sure that the HAB contract start date is the date that um, that they that you are aware that the HAB contract start date is the date that the PHA will start paying from. Um, and um, yep, this is just an acknowledgement that you've re received a copy of the property owner's guide to uh, the Housing's Choice Voucher Program, Lisa. Um, you can click here. Uh, keep in mind that this dig digital signature verification um, is the same legal uh, effect as a handwritten signature. So whether or not you're just clicking this button, it's as if you were to sign it, right? It's just as legally enforceable. Okay. Um, so here you'll have the name that's on your app. So if for some reason there's a misspelling or something like that, you can always go back to your um, profile information and change um, and edit that first and last name for that contact information to make sure that uh, your name is spelled correctly. So I'll go ahead and click save here. And this is the certification of additional amenities. So here you just wanna run through um, the year that it was built, 1989, square footage, 800. Um, bathroom one, let's say I also have a half. And you see how there it, it becomes a red line if you don't enter it. So um, carpet, no, fireplace, I wish, air conditioning, central, garbage disposal, dishwasher, no, ceiling fans. And then here you just, if you do a yes for a carport, you do have to select one. Um, so if you have a, a garage or a carport, just make sure that you um, make that selection here. Storm doors, washer, dryer, hookup. I should do that. Laundry facility. I do want to pull, so I'll put that there. Central, no. Uh, and again, this is just a smoke detector. Most of them will require that you have at least one smoke detector in there. All right. Um, and again, this red line um, it stays red. It doesn't allow me to sign it until that's filled out. So I'll go ahead and click in here. Oh, I've got an error. So this is great, right? This tells me what did I miss? Oh, okay, ceiling fans, how many? So this is to make sure that this is a completed document and that the housing authority doesn't have to send that back. You know, back in the day, what we'd have to do is go into the landlord services booth to turn the RTA. They flip through um, all the different documents, stack of papers this big, just to say, oh, you, you missed this thing. I need you to go back, sit down, sign it, come back up, right? So this is just to help you with that. All right. Are you sure you want to sign this document? Confirm. Click OK. I've got it. Uh, and now I go to the next one. Let's click save. OK. Vendor number verification. So again, as I'm running through these, they start to turn blue. Um, here's my vendor number verification. I've already submitted uh, a couple of RFTAs. Same with you. If once your information is already in there, that information will stay the same. You don't have to re-upload it. Go ahead and click yes here. Sign it. Or it. Start it next. Save form. Now we go to the direct deposit. Now this is a piece where a lot of housing authorities will require a wet signature. Um, we do say the handwritten signature has to be uh, attached above. So this is just to fill out the information to make sure it's cleaner, um, that people can read it. <laughs> is that a seven or is it a one kind of thing? Um, and then you can just go ahead and save that form. And then here hey, under direct deposits. Hey. Yep. Hey, Deanna. Hey, listen, I tried to ask this in the um, uh, chat, but they told me, anyway, they weren't understanding what I was asking. Sure. Right here on the uploaded instructions on the yeah. DHA one, Mm -hmm. There's not like the document you just you just showed us a direct deposit form is not mm -hmm. on here. Everything is uploaded is the front page of the RFTA. So there's not any of these mm -hmm. documents. 
So generally what you want to do is um, go here and then select the document. So it, it should right, have the direct deposit form here. We'll look at it and see what it is. Download yeah. it. It's not. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So if you go into the DHA site, you're saying the download isn't isn't there? No, the what you're doing, literally what you're there? doing, what you're doing right now, uh -huh. you click on there and you try to download it, it's gonna be the front sheet of the RFTA. So it's not, you oh. should not download it from there. Yeah, you would have to download from this part. You can click on I download. did. That's right, right. So look at it. Okay. Okay. Did y'all just change that like in the last nine minutes? No. <laughs> I, well, I am I'm not that serious, prepared, like, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> because so, we yeah, I mean, that's it, it was not on there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so normally it's it should just be whatever that information is. Um, I could do a Zoom session with you after the call and we can run through that as well. Okay. Cool. Right. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Um, so once you go to additional documents, you will have to download that and then sign off on it. Uh, and once you sign it, you could just upload it here. Um, and any other documents, so each, each PHA will have different upload instructions for specific documents that they're looking for. Um, and so they should be listed here. Um, we've also added a function to add the notice to vacate on um, your side as well. We've seen that some clients don't have the ability to do the upload. So if the client gives it to you because they can't sign it. Um, and, and keep in mind that this is only required if it's a relocation um, client. So if, it's re if they're relocating, they will have to have their previous notice to vacate from their previous landlord no actual information for you. It's just sometimes we've had that request from landlords that I want to upload this from my client. That's there as an option. All right, so I can click next here and then I'm sent to the RFTA section. Um, from this one, the requested lease start date, this just has an automatic check that it has to be after today's date, right? So um, your lease start date will be after today's date. Generally, we'd wanna start it at the first or the 15th of the month. So I'll just choose three one here. Um, security deposit amount, same as the actual proposed rent. Um, the date unit available for inspection. So this is actually, um, we're getting a lot better with initial inspections from the usage of Bob.ai. We've gone from like, you know, five weeks sometimes for initial inspections to now three days. So um, just make sure that the date that you actually put in here, they will not schedule it before this date. So if your unit's available for inspection tomorrow, make sure you click tomorrow. Um, the likelihood, pretty slim, you know, Two to three days is usually our, our average here. Um, so you can put out the 26, but at least after today's day. Um, so here it was an apartment. I'll say it's a low rise. This is the structure type. Um, and again, utilities and allowances. This used to have a lot of information. Um, again, this is coming from what you initially listed on your floor plan, right? So whatever was in your unit, I have my natural gas stove, so we're all good. Um, here, check one that apply. Um, if your unit was built after 1978, you don't have to have the lead-based paint disclosure. Um, and that's gonna be for the majority of units, depending on what city you're in. Um, but if you do require it, you could just check one of the others, but one of these does have to be checked. Um, and then here, uh, all you have to do is enter your actual business address. Two oh one one off on my keyboard all right then i sign here that that's done um so this form is ready for signature before you sign it just make sure that all the um, forms that were completed and uploaded um, for all the digital documents that they're requesting and click ok got it and then i just submit the rfda so keep in mind that linda jordan's email address the first one that you entered is already going to be sent to her automatically you don't have to enter that, right? Sometimes we get the same one kind of added here. Um, this is only if if Linda Jordan does, you know, she's already told you in the past that, oh, you know, I'm not used to this whole ERAFTA stuff. And they're like, why don't you send everything to my daughter? You can add the daughter's name here and it'll also send an additional email to the daughter as well. So that's where you would just add a user for that. But I, I want to do that here um, and I'll just click OK. Wow, you guys are active on chat, 99 plus, great. Um, so there you go, that's it. That's all you have here. Um, your RAFTA is completed. Um, it's sent to the renter for signature. Um, they can return the document back to you um, with comments, but they cannot edit any fields. We get this question a lot too, um, in terms of what sort of um, information is available for them to see. 
your vendor number verification, the direct deposit, your W-9, they will not be able to see any of that information. The only thing that they will be able to see is their voucher information, uh, the unit information, and also the RAFTA, and also additional documents if they are a relocation client and they can upload their own notice to vacate. All right. Um, so that is pretty much all we wanted to talk about. Um, Milan, I haven't been paying attention to the chat. Is there any questions or anything that you think we should answer live here today? Well, I think we enjoy covered the most. Maybe we can go through the latest two questions that we have. Okay, sure. All right, so I've got one from Connie. For a household that have more than one grown up, do we need to add all of them into this application process? No, um, if anyone's over 18, it just has to be the head of household. Um, the only item would be um, some PHAs when we get to the HAB contract process are going to be requesting that um, you add in everyone who's gonna be on that lease. So all the family members will be in there. But for right now, um, that's not needed. It just has to be for the head of household. Um, for the, that additional piece where I said you can add the user, if the head of household is not as available for inspections, um, like the they have a, a college student um, kid who's 19 and can sign off on inspections, you can add that person there because it'll be a lot easier for them to be available for the inspections um, if they're going to be home. Um, and also as long as they can sign, they have to be someone over 18 to sign for the inspections. But um, generally, if one person is more computer savvy than the other and you're going to be communicating with them via email and via text, that's always a good idea to add another um, another grown up on there with their contact information in case you can't contact the head of household. Um, Andrew asks, if a user is added, will they have access to track the progress of the raft as well? Yeah, they'll have access as well. They can create their own account. Um, so the, the new person that you add will be tied to the head of household. Um, then each person will be able to um, take a look at uh, what's in there for that specific unit. And I, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping you're talking about the actual clients here, um, but if you have the other ability to add them as a linked partner, you can also do that. Um, they will only see the units where they are the owner if you're a property manager though. Um, Mr. Nunez, no one asks, um, okay. So yeah, Mr. Nunez, I, I remember speaking to you before. Um, with the screenshots and the issues for um, adding that other uh, linked partner, right? I think we're, we're still working on that one. Um, Jacqueline asks, client is telling me that the relationship code that was automatically sent to him says not valid and he's unable to sign the RAFTA. It won't let him pass the relationship code. Um, we have seen that for a couple of um, clients. The, the general issue with that is the email address that they had um, isn't the same email address that's on their voucher. Um, so for those, if you could just send those to us through support, we can definitely review those for you um, and make sure that that gets taken care of. Um, generally, though, if they're looking at it, if it's the same email address, they won't need the relationship code just to sign their opt-in. So if he could bypass that, Jacqueline, just ask him to bypass, like, don't select that, say that I don't have a relationship code. He should still see it if it's the same email address that's used. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, any other questions? I have a question. Sure. Yeah. So do we need to be like checking in every day to Bob AI or is everything like um, email automated? So like when they're ready to do my inspection, are they going to be calling me, emailing me? If, if there's glitches so on, on, the, on the inspection, they will email it to you. Um, okay. it depends on how many units you have. I think that's sort of a personal preference, right? Like if you, I check my email every day, but that's just because otherwise I'm, you know, I get really OCD about it where I'm like, I do to make sure I have zero emails. Um, sometimes people have like thousands of emails and they can't do that over time. I have the luxury of not. So, um, it just depends on you. Um, we will email you two weeks before the inspection is scheduled, um, that the inspection is, is, is there, right? Okay. Um, also, you could check your um, dashboard once you get in, you can go into um, the inspections app and it'll show you the actual date that it's going to be inspected. Um, if the, one thing I would recommend is if you haven't seen that um, to, RAFTA submitted piece, 
if it was sent to the client and they somehow haven't signed off on it yet and it's been in like two days, I would just double check with the client to make sure, hey, did you see, did, you know, can you make sure that you can go in and sign your RTA because you want to make sure that that raft is submitted um, in a timely manner. Right. And then if we need to like, um, like, let's say I, I submit my RFTA, but there's still like some things I, I still need to do. How mm -hmm. do I know that? Again, will that be through an email right. or I have to look on there? So I, I think what you're referring to is if you submitted your RFTA and um, for some reason the case manager said, actually, I need a copy of your deed or something like that, right? They'll contact you um, through bod.ai, through their, the chat. Um, and it will also send you an email that says your RAFTA is um, being negotiated or is pending this additional document. And it'll, they'll tell you in the chat that says, hey, I need the um, the actual copy of the property, the property deed or um, so and so didn't, you know, you, you added a RAFTA package, but it's not signed by the tenant. So that's one thing I, I did want to mention is. If you're adding the RFTA packet as an additional document because they did um, an actual handwritten signature, you, you the client will not be able to do an e-signature for that. So it's sort of like either or, right? If you have the RAFTA package and you're uploading it, you're telling us that everything on that RAFTA package is already being added into additional documents. So if you have an RFTA packet, make sure that you're not, um, you're uploading one that's signed because that's what we see a lot of um, them being taken, like uh, sort of being rejected for is you uploaded a RAFTA package, but it wasn't signed by the tenant. Um, the other thing that I've seen in terms of like looking at support tickets is um, you uploaded the, the RAFTA package, but it's actually a vacate notice. So that's why we added the vacate notice there as an option for you. Um, make sure that you do not um, upload the RAFTA package as an additional document if you're still expecting the client to sign it electronically, okay? Um, all right, so ooh, let me go back up. Um, we have existing waiting lists, and we also have a list from the PHA that have applied for some of our specific properties. Can we still complete the raft through this app? Yeah, yeah. If you have waiting lists in terms of um, clients who are about to get into your units for, like, say, you're a tax credit and you have a waiting list for that, right? Um, you can still submit it through the raft. Whether or not the PHA accepts. Um, Electronic routers would be the other thing. You can download that router package and still submit it to them, whether that's via email, drop it off at their office, or however they're taking those now. Um, Lauren asks, can you explain what you mean when it says draft under the, the router tab? Yep. So if the router is in draft, that means you've started it. Uh, but it hasn't moved on to the next one. So the second you go to create RAPTA, it's automatically in draft status. Um, so that means you're you're still maybe entering in the unit. Um, you're still going through trying to get all your documents together. So that'll just remain in draft so that you don't save. I mean, so it saves all the information that you've already entered and you don't lose any of the information that you've already started before. So yeah, it's not submitted yet. It's still in draft. Question, if a RAPTA has been submitted and there for whatever reason needs to be called to get it updated or corrected. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. If the raft has been submitted and something needs to be updated, can you do that? Yes. Yeah. Um, depending on what is being requested. So say you forgot to submit a sample lease, for example, um, that that's an additional document that's required. You want to enter the sample lease. You could just upload that sample lease in there um, and whatever the document is, you could just add that as a note. Um, in here, I, I could share my screen real quick and go back to that piece, right? So here, uh, under additional documents, um, you can go in. Ah, actually, you can't. Um, once it's returned to you, you should be able to do that. But right now, it's already been submitted. Uh, but once that status goes to return um, to the landlord, you'll have the ability to upload it then. So you have to request as it stands now. This question has been asked many times. So um, as it stands now, you have to request the PHA to send it back. So this is something we can actually discuss. Like, you no, know, like if you feel that there is a need for you to recall the RFTA, then we can discuss with the PHA and ask them, hey, do we have to support it? It's a work allocation question on their side, right? The RAFTA is already as allocated to a case manager. So do we just pull it back without their consent? Uh, if, is there a real business need for that? 
uh, i think that is that is worth discussing so are there real use cases when you really want to pull it back without without i mean you can always message them they look at the message and will return it to you look at the reason take a decision and return it to you so do you do you guys feel that there is a need for for us to recall it without that step Okay, I guess this question might be um, sort of related to the question that you asked before. Um, is if if you're if you need to upload a, a specific document, um, we could speak to the PHAs about having that ability um, to where the case manager, you know, normally what you could do is just say, hey, can you return the the, the rafta to me, and I can upload the document after the fact. Um, generally, once that rafta is returned, then you could sort of make adjustments to that as you need to, because it's already returned to you, and that that allows you to reopen that additional document and upload whichever one you need. So but now do they don't want you to change it because they are working on it. They may have spent, let's say, 10 minutes on it. And then if you change it, then they don't know they're working on a moving goalpost, right? So they don't want that. So that is that is a thinking now. So they had another question. Um, after they move in, where should the lease contract be sent? Um, that should normally be sent to the case manager. You can upload it as um, a file through the chat, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, how they're accepting it now, and that may vary by the PHA. Um, so I could try to, to to talk to some of our PHA partners and and get that answer for you. We have a question. So how many uh, PHAs have accepted using the Bob AI? Because I know DHA Dallas Housing sent out the email, but like Tarrant County, Fort Worth, or Mesquite, Grand Prairie, they have not sent anything to me yet. Right. Um, some of them. So the message that Dallas sent you to you, um, the Dallas Housing Authority, was because um, they're only accepting it through eRAFTA now. Um, some of them you could still download that RTA package and still send it in, but they are not currently utilizing the eRAFTA now. Okay, got it. I do yeah. have a question about the Walker. So, I mean, just to clarify that, well, forgive me. So just to clarify that question, you can create the RAFTA for anyone, and if they're expecting you to email it to, let's say. Um, uh, raft at uh, tarrantcounty.com or something like that you yeah. can just email that rafta package to them oh so you have to do both you don't have to do both right no you only i mean you are the expectation is that you would fill in the rafta and then send it to them right yeah, so yeah. you can since you have all this documentation everything here you come in and change the unit and you change the count the agency to tarrant uh -huh. county housing authority and then it yeah. does the affordability calculation for them and you can download the package and send it to them Oh, I see. So do they actually have access to this platform as well? They don't need access because they're getting the rafter in a in a PDF, right? Oh, I see. Okay. So it is ahead. as good as you are sending a well formatted, well written, you know, like affordability check completed rafter package to them. Okay. Okay. So that so that so and it's it they don't have to pay anything. I mean, but this, yeah, yeah. So that, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. But I do have a question quickly about the Walker voucher. Um, someone told me, oh, I have a, a Walker voucher. You refer the Bob AI, you can see it. But when I see the voucher package, the page itself, it doesn't say anything about Walker. Uh, Walker. I have no experience with Walker, so I don't know. What should I look at? You know, it is in the program field. Uh, there is, there is. Uh, you would see that the program is not at CV, it is Walker. So we will work on putting that as a bigger field on the RFTA package heading itself. Oh. But as it stands now, if you look at the voucher, you will see that it is a Walker voucher. Thank Go you. to the, the, the voucher tab, look at the program and you will see it is a Walker voucher. Wait, does that answer the question? So. She, and she muted herself back, right, Connie? If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out, though. Um, I had another one in, in the chat. Uh, information is showing for the RAFTA, um, and it's showing as draft when the home has already passed inspection. That may be because you've created another one. Um, but sometimes, you know, it, it just depends. That's a, a very interesting one-off that I, I'd love to take a look at. If you could just um, email me your, your address so that I could take a look at that one in particular. Um, but normally it just shows us draft if it hasn't been submitted yet. But if a if a raft has been submitted, um, has been approved, inspections passed, the only time it will ever go back to draft is if you've created the same um, RFTA for another client. Um, that should be the only reason though. Um, 
Clover asks, what if the what if the veteran no longer has access to the email that's on file with DHA? Um, if they don't have access to that specific email address, we can always reset um, the one that is with. Uh, generally, the DHA case manager can update what they have in Yardi, and then um, it will be passed into our system um, through a, a nightly batch. So, if they update what it is in Yardi, then it'll come into their account. But we can also reset it on their user profile as well, so that they can have access to that email. So, but for you to sign the RFTA, all this. Yeah, you, you should definitely do that. But for you to sign the RFTA, all that you have to do is to put the right email address that the veteran has on the voucher now. And if the name and the and, and matches, then you that email would be sent to that that to the veteran and he can sign it. So if you think about it, what we are really saying is hey, for you to sign this rafter, you don't need uh, the PHA to say that this veteran is actually our our client. He can sign it. And then when the RFTA goes back to them, the agency will then have to approve the voucher itself. So again, to repeat the whole idea, you can create an RFTA for any voucher holder in the country. So in this case, uh, since the email is not matching, the software is not able to say, oh, this is actually a DHA client. It may not be able to. Uh, and But then if you put the right email address, the veteran will get it, he will sign it. And when it goes back, the, the PHA will, will um, I think what Clover is saying, though, Bijoy, is if they don't have access to that email anymore, then they can't. But sign they can in. they can put the right email they have now, right? So that so that they the will current get current email address, right? Yeah. The current email, and then the 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 reset will happen when the when the RFTA gets approved. So um, so that what Win said, like reaching out to the case manager and getting it done, so that the same step will happen when the when the case manager looks at the RFTA and approves it. So. Um, so we will so put if you don't out, want to I mean, reach out is... in advance, you can still create the rafter for that that, that veteran, yeah, and then and the then. Uh, housing authority will go in and approve it um, and then with the same that new email address. So they're basically saying, oh, this veteran is actually our, our voucher holder. And so that the, the same information piece that Min was explaining that is getting set at that time. So you don't have to wait. And you should not wait. You should, you should create that rafter and then send it there. Yeah. Uh, and then Christina had a question. If someone turns their RAFTA packet in, do we still send it through the RAFTA email? Um, that depends on the housing authority you're working with. So um, if, say, you're working with Houston, for example, um, and that RFTA packet is already sent in, then um, you, you, know, you could still download the RAFTA and then send it in. But if not, um, if you're working with DHA specifically, um, they're only accepting uh, Rogers through eRAFTA. So if you're emailing it to them, that will go through the their transcribe function. But it's always better to just kind of just start it from Baza.ai initially. That way you don't have any of that um, sort of time in order for them to get to the point of transcribing. Yeah, um, the transcribe yeah. is not a not a great app. You know, like you can you should try to create the app right away. Um, create the RFTA online, yes. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm sorry you're having a hard time with the new app, but I think the more you use it, the more you get used to it, the, like, the easier it'll get. Um, and we'll start to have more of these like landlord workshops and, and certain, um, we're working on a desktop manual that sort of like walks you through the steps um, on um, like a, a PDF so that you don't, you could just have that with you, open it up, walk through it as you go through instead of having to like start and stop on the video. So we are developing that so it'll be a little bit user, um, easier for users um, to get to get used to. All right. Any other questions? I know we're, we're right at time. So any other questions we can have? Okay. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who's um, attended our landlord workshop. Um, I put my email in the chat if anyone has any additional questions. Jackie, thanks for sending that to me. Um, and then once we uh, move forward, uh, hope we can... Have a great working relationship. So um, take care and enjoy your Wednesday and we'll talk again soon. Right. Bye everyone.